This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. When I ride my horses, there are certain things that they are prone to anticipate, such as coming across the middle if you're a reining horse. And so when you come through the middle in a show pen, you're going to do three circles. Might be too large fast and a small slow, might be a small slow then too large fast, or it might be a large fast, small slow, large fast. But then you're going to change leads in the middle. So it doesn't take very long before these horses get to the point where when they come through the middle, they start thinking, I have an idea, let's change leads here. And oftentimes people think that by avoiding doing that maneuver, avoiding circling and changing the leads, they think that they're actually helping their horse. When in reality, in my opinion, what happens is it's guaranteed to happen like that when you go in the show pen. Where at home you might be able to avoid it. Instead of avoiding it, I've found that actually kind of confronting that head-on is a better idea. So I'll actually go ahead and change leads across the middle and then do some other changes of directions where I control their body and almost open up that can of worms, open up that problem, and then go ahead and fix it. The way that you'll see that dealt with on my DVDs is that on the basic body control DVD and the bridalist DVD, you'll see that I do the four-leaf clover pattern. And a lot of times in the four-leaf clover pattern, people think that, yay, it's great when they first start doing it, and then after they've done it for 10, 15 times, like meaning 10, 15 different rides, then the horse starts to know the pattern, and then problems start to occur, and that's usually when I get an email that says, do you have a different pattern? And that's actually when the training begins for me, is when the horse knows that we're going to go up there and turn left and up there and turn left and they start trying to fall in, duck and dive and do different things because they know what's coming. That's when the training begins. So a quick tip would be figure out what the th horses are going to anticipate and then figure out a way not to avoid it, not to add to the problem, but a way to address the issue to where you can actually deal with it, to where you can get through it, as opposed to avoiding it. I don't have enough arms to lead Jack and show you, but if you can imagine that we just came from where I was looking, and then I had to bring Jack over here, and I'm early enough here at the expo, that I had to hold this door open, point Jack this direction and say, go for it, buddy, because I needed to hold the door open. And I had to send him in through here. And then once we got in here, we're looking at the back of some curtains and what opens into the Celeste Center down here in Ohio at the fairgrounds. Then after he steps in here, I had to say, okay, see these curtains, Jack? I'm gonna pull these curtains back and I'm going to stand here and hold the curtain and you need to walk down into this aisle. And Jack just sticks his head forward in both cases and goes, okay, if you say so. And then we had to squeeze down this kind of tight aisle. And then I had to, uh, again, open the door and 
send Jack in and Jack goes, I am a confident horse. I will go where you point me. There's a little behind the scenes action with Jack at Equine Affair, Ohio. Jack, you've already got straw in your hair. Silly boy. One of the best things about taking a horse somewhere like an expo or a horse show is all the just general life experience that they get. So many more horses, so many more people, and trucks, trailers, just all the chaos that goes on with going to an event is what ends up seasoning a horse. And that's what I love about traveling with the horses like Jack. Even just the behind the scenes things, the curtains that you might have to go through or the mud puddles you have to go around. Or if you're at an expo like I was with Jack, horses with flags or different breeds of horses, different gates of horses, you wouldn't think that would throw them off. But if you have a horse go by holding their tail very high in the air, it'll actually trigger some of the horses to think something's going on. So I just love the exposure. Even in the warm-up arena, you get to see different people standing around watching and then the different horses or other things that you'll see. One of my favorites is when you see carts coming into the arena because carts are, you know, something that a lot of horses get a little bit scared about. Actually, Jack is very, very confident, but he met this little miniature team that had him a little bit on edge. When they first came into the arena, I thought it was funny because he was looking and he's very confident and he felt curious and I decided to use it as an opportunity to train him to see how he would still respond to me or if he would still respond to me and my cues and I chose to ask him to spin and every time he rotated around to the side that the little team was on, he was trying to look. So it had a very strange effect. He was technically listening to me, but definitely distracted. So 
so that uh, that was an interesting thing to have happen with Jack. I think it's stuff like this that really just gets them trained. For me, I also have the opportunity to ride them into an arena full of people, and that's just stuff that is is just worth its weight in gold because he's just getting more and more seasoning and more and more awareness about it's okay, life's a little bit chaotic, but I'm here and I'm guiding you. Stacey Westfall is an AQHA, and NRHA freestyle reigning champion. Westfall was the first woman to take part in and win the Road to the Horse competition. There you go. With her husband, Jesse, she pre presents clinics at venues throughout the nation to inspire and teach people how to build better relationships with their horses. Today, she'll be presenting Teaching Woe from Beginning to Brightless. Please join me in welcoming Stacy Westfall. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you came out this afternoon. How many of you have been following Jack's story on YouTube? Very good. Yep. I'm doing a goodbye video. Because my horse is over here somewhere. So I think it's kind of funny that he's kind of closed up in the booth. <laughs> Everything's closed. Try sneaking up on him. Everyone's gone home. Jack. Who does not appear to be distressed by this development. He's watching me now. Hi Jack. Ready to go back to the barn? <laughs> <laughs> 